But the problem is it's hard to fit a fig tree inside your ideal apple tree box. What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having a fantastic day. It is Tuesday, December 12th here in South Georgia. And on today's video, we're gonna do a little figging around. Now that most of our trees have gone dormant, we're gonna revisit pruning a little bit, show you what we're doing to our smaller trees, show you how we get back control of a unruly sprawling tree and also talk about whether or not we can keep a fig tree to a single trunk and why you would want to do that so as we can see from browsing around this part of the orchard most of our trees have gone dormant now a few of the trees like this white marcel's tree here still have some leaves on it hasn't gotten quite cold enough yet to knock this one back but most of the trees in our orchard are bare at this point so this whole dormancy process is what allows the trees to kind of take a break for a little bit and then once things start warming up in late winter early spring they'll put on a ton of new growth and that's where we'll get our figs and speaking of figs we have had several people ask about these figs that are still on the tree when you get freezing temperatures and the tree goes dormant they want to know can they leave these figs on there will they still ripen and unfortunately they won't they will eventually fall off or you just come out here and knock them off so our in-ground trees for the most part are all dormant and i also let these potted trees go dormant as well yes i could keep this inside the greenhouse and try to keep it growing all throughout the winter but don't have much room in there and so i just let it go dormant let it kind of go through the natural cycle so this one was sitting outside the greenhouse loses its leaves had a few figs on there that i broke off and it's just fine inside this pot here as i've told you before if you order a fig tree from us and don't have anywhere to put it yes you can step it up to a larger pot but you can also leave it in this pot right here we'll plant this one next spring it'll have a nice root system on it like that right there and it'll take off pretty fast so now that we've hit dormancy this is when we want to start doing all our heavy pruning in our fig orchard we've already done some pruning as we were taking cuttings to grow more trees but we still have a lot of trees that need some pruning but before we start hacking back some of these trees i want to address this idea of growing a fig tree as a single trunk kind of like we did right here with this salem dark tree so we get asked about this quite a bit and the other day i was going back and forth with my buddy matthew up in athens and he said he was about to meet with a lady who's got a pretty good sized fig orchard and she prunes them all to a single trunk when i heard that i thought man that's a lot of pruning so growing a fig tree like this does have several advantages it's a lot easier to spread mulch around a lot easier to pull weeds around or if you're just going to let the grass grow around it a lot easier to weed eat around a tree with a single trunk but the problem is it's hard to fit a fig tree inside your ideal apple tree box a fig tree doesn't want to grow like an apple tree most fig trees want to grow like this one right here they want to put out all these sucker branches spread out wide and grow like a big bush so you can keep your fig tree to a single trunk but you're going to need to do a lot more pruning if you're going to do it that way it's probably a lot easier to do with a potted tree than it is an in-ground tree so you can see here with this Salem dark tree, even though I've kept it to a single trunk for most of its life, it still wants to put out these sucker limbs at the bottom here because that's what a fig tree does. Now, because I've only got one here and I've got a nice trunk here, I do think I'll remove this one. So I'm gonna try to get as close to the dirt as possible down there and I'm gonna cut that one off. But that doesn't mean it's gone for good. We'll probably still get some more suckers coming out of there the next year and so we got to keep working at it if we want to keep this one looking like this so for me personally keeping all my trees to a single trunk is a little ambitious but i do think there's a happy medium there now i don't want all my trees sprawling all over the place like this one and we're going to cut this one back pretty hard in a minute so i'm perfectly fine with something like this that we have on this improved celeste tree not a single trunk but manageable but do whatever works for you. If you want to prune it aggressively and keep it in a single trunk, make it look like one of those pretty apple trees, go for it. If you want to let it sprawl all over the place and do what it wants to do, let it happen. 
So now let's do a little dormant pruning, starting out with these smaller trees that are only a year old. We've already taken care of some of these, but still have quite a few left where we can show you our process. So when we're pruning larger, older trees, the goal, like I mentioned earlier, is to keep them more manageable. But when we're pruning smaller trees, like we have on this side of the orchard, the goal is to promote more branching next year. I know everywhere I cut that fig tree, I'm gonna get two, three, maybe four new branches coming out of that spot next year. So let's use this tree right here as an example. This is a one year old LSU gold tree that has given us some exceptional growth in the first year. The tallest point of that tree is probably about eight foot tall. Amazing how much this thing grew just in one year. So the first thing I wanna do is cut this really tall part of the tree. I could just cut the tip of it up there around eight foot tall or so, but I don't really want my branches to start that high. So I'm gonna cut it down here closer to about chest level on me, around five foot tall or so. So we'll just take our pruners and cut it right there and we should get lots of new branches coming out of that spot next year. And so now that we've got that big one cut, we can start working on some of these others. So we can see we've got about one, two, three, four, five different sucker limbs coming out at the base of this tree here. I'm not gonna remove them all because I'm not trying to go with a single trunk here, but I do wanna remove some of them. I can already tell some of them are gonna be problematic next year. Like this one right here is gonna be slapping me every time I ride by with a lawnmower. So I definitely wanna get rid of a few of these. I'm gonna get rid of this one right here. And probably that little one right there. And that one over there looks like it could become trouble next year too. So we'll get rid of that one as well. So we got that one cut down to just three limbs coming out of the bottom there. And for the smaller limbs, I just basically cut the tips off those to encourage more branching next year. And then for these smaller one year old trees that are only two or three foot tall because they were planted in the fall, they didn't have near as much time to grow as those others. We're just gonna basically cut the tips out of these. That way we can hopefully get some more branches next year. Not gonna prune these back a whole lot, just cutting the tips off. And you could talk to 10 different fig tree growers and you might hear 10 different ways to prune small fig trees. There's no right or wrong way. I'm just showing you my particular strategy. And now for this sprawling booger of a GE Neri tree right here, our strategy is just keep cutting, keep cutting until it looks manageable. So we've got our work cut out for us here. We've got some limbs that are laid on the ground there, putting down more roots. This tree will just keep spreading and spreading if we let it. I gotta figure out which trunks I'm gonna keep. Probably that big one right there and maybe that one right there. So I might just keep those two and cut everything else. So we're definitely gonna need our loppers for this one. I'm gonna start hacking back here and then I'll show you what it looks like when we're finished. All right, so a nice little pile of limbs later and here's what we've got. Had to be a little careful in the beginning, especially down here because I couldn't see my irrigation line. So I had to just cut a little bit piece by piece until I found that irrigation line. Then I could really start hacking. So you can kind of see this stump down here. And yes, we're still gonna get some suckers coming out of there, probably quite a few next year. We'll have to manage that. But I like the way it looks a lot better now. So for these two main limbs that we left, we did cut the tops out of those. We'll get some more branches coming out of the top of those come spring. And I left some of these limbs, some of the bigger ones, and cut the tips off those to get some more branches there as well. Now, will we sacrifice some production cutting it back that much? No doubt we will. But in the long run, we've got a lot better situation here than having that tree that was just trying to sprawl all over the place. So yes, we will get fewer figs off this tree next year, but it is a lot more manageable now. Now pruning a fig tree back that much is not something you're gonna to have to do every single year. This fig tree hadn't been significantly pruned in about three years, so it was long overdue. And here's my other Gianeri tree, which looks a lot like that one over there did before we just cut it back. So later this afternoon, I'm gonna have to work on this one and get it a little more manageable. 
So hopefully that gives you an idea of just how much you can cut some of these fig trees back and not bother them one bit. If you've got an old established fig tree on your homestead that's just getting way too big, don't be scared to get the chainsaw out. You're not going to hurt it one bit and you may actually improve the production the following year. And if you missed that video we did on how to protect fig trees during the winter, you can watch that right here. We'll talk about several different strategies you can use depending on where you live. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.